Reaction being the yo 301. Dang, 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 dang. My brothers and sisters. Once again, y'all, we are back for another one of these true crime horror, dark, deep, and mysterious what the is going on type of videos. And the channel that we going to today, he don't put out videos as frequently as I would like him to, but every time he drop a video, y'all, it's a banger and it's a treat for all of us. And we in for another one of those streets today. And that channel is Ryan from Tragedy Tales. Tragedy Tales, y'all. And shout out to Ryan real quick, y'all, because Tragedy Tales, man, the last two videos that uh, we watched over here, you know, we reacted to, he actually commented on. He was like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Just letting me know that he support my channel and reacting to his videos. And I'm just going to let you know, uh, Ryan. Every video you put out, bro, we gonna react to it because I love your channel, bro. I love your content. You're doing an amazing job. Keep going. Keep gaining subscribers. Great things are definitely are hit, are ahead of you in the future. You know what I'm saying? You already doing good. You damn near got 150k subscribers now. But I know for a fact, one day in the near future, you gonna be at a million subscribers, bro. And I'm just here for the ride with you. But I digress, my brothers and sisters. The title of the video, Ponytail Zipline for Zardels, number 11. Every time Tragedy Tales do a Bizarre Delft video, it just be crazy because it these Delfts really do be bizarre as fuck. And look at this, Ponytail Zipline. So somebody, it sound like somebody died because they wanted to hang by their ponytail going down the damn zip, zip line. Now how bizarre and crazy can you damn be to even attempt to do something like that? You know what I'm saying? Like rest in peace to them, but damn bro, it's almost like you asking for Duff doing something crazy like that. But I don't know, I don't know my brothers and sisters. I don't know if that's actually how the story gonna go, but that's what it sound like. But we finna see exactly how the story go. But before we see exactly how that story go, y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you may need. Get what you need. We back to Ryan from Tragedy Tales, my brothers and sisters. Y'all got what y'all need. Y'all ready to go? Then let's fucking go. Without mortality, what is humanity? Seasons change, the flowers bloom and wither, we start from dust, and to dust we shall return. Most of us think we're gonna drift away in our sleep, or maybe we'll die from old age, but some of us croak it in ways that you just won't believe. So as usual, without any messing about, here are five more bizarre deaths. Get whatever you may need. Fireworks are supposed to symbolize joy, celebration, happiness, well-being, and total health. However, in this story, they actually did the total opposite. This explosive story begins in America, in Maine, on the 4th of July, 2015. On that fateful night, 22-year-old Devin Staples had no idea it would be his last. Dang. Devin was described as a warm-hearted, fun-loving, life-of-the-party type of guy. He lived in Orlando, where here he worked as an actor at Disney World. He would dress up as Gaston and Goofy, and he was amazing at his job. To celebrate Independence Day, Devon attended a party in the back garden of a friend's house. He brought with him his family, and of course, fireworks and booze. 
Before long, they were all singing and drinking as fireworks zoomed into the night sky. As the night went on, they got slowly and slowly more drunk and things slowly got out of hand. In all the craziness, Devon said he was going to light a firework on his head. What? Now, the firework he was going to put on his head was not a small one. It was one of those massive, massive mortar shells. The ones that are five inches long and must be at least two inches wide. They are ridiculously powerful and can propel up to 150 feet into the air. It was also described as out of the mortar tube, meaning it had no metal casing, so it was just sort of the inside of the firework. Devon put it on his head and laughed. He told everyone that it was a dud firework and that it was a funny, harmless joke. His friends and family erred on the side of caution and told him to take it off his head. But despite the warnings, Devon continued to laugh and joke as it rested on his head. He continued to tease his friends with the idea of lighting it. He pulled out a lighter out of his pocket and began sparking it over his head. And of course, it was all fun and games until it wasn't. All of a sudden, Devon sparked the lighter above his head and the firework ignited. It was not a dud. Within the space of just a second, it went off and because there was no mortar tube to project it in any direction, it exploded right on top of his head, killing him in front of his friends instantly. According to his brother, Cody, he said, and I quote, I was the first one who got there. There was no rushing him to the hospital. There was no Devon left when I got there. It was a freak accident. I can only imagine the complete horror going from a fun night of celebrations to absolute tragedy within seconds. Bro, that's almost like him. It, it is. It, it's unintentional, though. It's an unintentional suicide, I guess we can say. But it's like he did that shit in front of his family. It's like imagine one of your family members. Y'all, we all at a picnic or a family reunion, a barbecue, whatever, Christmas. And one of your family members just walk in the room and just shoot themselves in the head. It with everybody watching. Grandma, auntie, uncle, cousins, nieces, nephews, daughters, brothers, sisters, sons. You get what I'm saying? Everybody seen him pretty much kill himself, man. That shit does just got me like, ooh, wee. Ugh, putting a little funny feeling in me. Like, that is fucked up. This story goes to show the dangers of fireworks in general. There's a reason why they're plastered with warning labels. They're explosives. What Devon did was extremely silly and the nightmare that unfolded will forever be burned into everyone's memories that witnessed it. Exactly. Number four. Wow. This story is so unusual It'll make you think twice about using any gadget in your kitchen. It begins in Morehouse, in eastern France, on the 18th of July, 2017. That day was to be like any other for 33-year-old fitness blogger, Rebecca Berger. Rebecca had 55,000 friends on Facebook and 158,000 Instagram followers. The fitness guru would highlight the value of fitness and training, as well as the food and the lifestyle. She was described by friends as a body princess, bikini icon, and a beautiful athlete. But while she was in great shape, showcasing her amazing figure, she was also described as a generous, kind person who was full of life. Sadly, on that warm July morning, it would all come to a tragic end. On the morning of July the 18th, Rebecca had woken up early. She planned to start the day right, as she usually would with her various fitness routines. She went into the kitchen of her home in Morehouse and began preparing a nice hot drink. After she made it, she thought that the one thing it was missing was delicious whipped cream. So Rebecca began setting up a pressurized whipped cream dispenser, one that she bought years earlier. Here, she attached a nitrous canister within a plastic housing and then fitted the cream canister. Once it was all set up, without any hesitation, Rebecca pulled down on the trigger to release the whipped cream and the entire thing exploded. The pressurized cream flew backwards and hit Rebecca's thorax. The impact was so strong in fact that it broke all of her ribs and caused her heart to suddenly stop. She dropped to the floor 
and her family began giving CPR. The paramedics were called and they managed to successfully revive her on the scene. However, she never regained consciousness and tragically the next day, she succumbed to her injuries in the hospital. Damn, After now what's the chances of this? That shit hit her in her thorax. Like what is the chance? And not only did it hit her in that specific spot, but it hit her to the point where that shit stopped her heart from beating. Man, see this one I just say, man, this just my my one of my I won't say daily reminder, but it's just my reminder that I've said many, many times, and y'all know it too. But when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And just like that damn lady woke up and did not know it was her last day, this is why they say, and it almost sounds cliche, but at the end of the day, it is real, that every day we wake up, we should be living it like it's our fucking last because some crazy shit like that can happen, and that could be the end. Wow. After a brief investigation, it was found that the dispenser that Rebecca had used that day was actually faulty and had actually been recalled in 2013 for safety concerns. For whatever reason, Rebecca was still using it and it cost her her life. Officials commented and said that this was a total freak accident that nobody could predict. Her family posted on all the socials two days later, breaking the terrible news to her followers and urging them not to use the whipped cream dispensers, leaving her fans and the world in shock at her bizarre and early passing. Man, R.I.P. to Rebecca, man. That one right there just sad as fuck, bro. That beautiful lady doing all this amazing shit in her life, influencing all these amazing people and following that he she had to go out like that. Ugh, man, I be saying, like, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go, but it's just still hard to kind of just fathom that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's real, but damn, man. Let's go to number three. Now this story goes to show that real life is often stranger than fiction. This story begins on the 15th of June, 2018 in Indonesia, more specifically in North Taraja. Now for a bit of background, the Tana Taraja region in Indonesia is bristling with unique features. From its diverse culture to its beautiful mountain views, it's paradise. However, without a doubt, this region is most famous for its bizarre funerals. Hmm? Now, when Taranjans die, it's tradition that local residents hold funerals that can last for days, involve music, dance, and alcohol, and even the sacrifice of water buffalo. They're meant to celebrate life more so than to mourn death. Then, once the funeral is over, once a year, the deceased relatives are dug up, exhumed, dressed in different clothes, even taken out for lunch, posed for photographs, and then placed back in their coffin. What the fuck kind of place is this? Okay, at first I wasn't having no problem, even though I feel like that shit is a little crazy or weird or whatever, that they actually having these funerals for days. But every year, they dig the body back up and do it all over again. And not only do they just do the celebration all over again, they take the body out and have lunch with it. Well, the f bro, I'm so glad I live where I live. Jesus Christ, this is crazy as fuck. And you want to know what's so crazy about it on some real shit? To them, it's normal. It's not even crazy to them. It's all very bizarre, but I suppose that's their culture. And it's been this way for hundreds, if not thousands of years. The first thing they do at these funerals is heave a specially made wooden coffin up a bamboo ladder. They then place the coffin on a lacane, a large carved wood tower, where here it would rest for the remainder of the funeral. Torijan people believed that the deceased would be able to watch the party from there, as from the tower, you can see all the people celebrating and dancing and drinking wine below. On the 15th of June, 2018, it was the funeral for Berta Kondorura, the mother of 40-year-old Salman Kondurura. That fateful day, Salman arrived for his mother's funeral. He was one of the pallbearers. He, along with 15 to 20 other people, carefully carried his mother's coffin right to the top 
of the bamboo ladder. This is the video captured, and obviously I can't show it all because of the guidelines, but it shows the mass of people almost at the top of the ladder. However, just as they got to the top, all of a sudden, one of the pool bearers lost his footing and this caused the ladder to slip and collapse. As the people tumbled to the ground, the large coffin soon followed. There wasn't any time to react. The coffin crashed on the ground with Salmon, the son of the deceased, still underneath. Damn. The coffin, being as ornate and heavy as it was, completely pulverized Salmon's head. Damn. Salmon was rushed to the hospital, but sadly he died from his injuries that evening. Officials said that the accident occurred because the ladder wasn't properly reinforced. However, the family decided not to press any charges. A few days later, Salmon was laid to rest right beside his mother. But just imagine that, dying at your own mother's funeral by your own mother's coffin. It's completely bizarre and something right out of Final Destination. But now that's some bizarre deal. Like that's the epitome. Like that is the literal, literally the the uh, perfect example of a bizarre death. This man died from his damn mama coffin at her funeral. Wow. As always, I'm interested in your thoughts below. That was crazy. Number two. This tragic story begins in the Calvert Vaux Park in Brooklyn on the cold afternoon of September the 5th, 2013. That day, a 19-year-old by the name of Roman Priazek Jr. decided it was the perfect day to fly his RC helicopter in the park. It was his only day off work for the week, the weather was perfect, so he invited his dad to come with him. It was going to be an amazing day. Roman was an incredibly good remote control helicopter pilot for his age. He was capable of performing insane tricks, flying it backwards, upside down, and moving it in ways that was simply impossible for a real helicopter to do. Is this man going to accidentally fly the damn toy helicopter into his face or his neck or his head or something and end up killing himself? That would be crazy as fuck too. He had this one trick where he would let the helicopter free fall above his head only to restart the motor when it was just inches from hitting him, leaving his viewers in shock. He was the I guess they just answered the fucking question. Described by his sister as the best person ever and that he had the biggest heart. Having been introduced to model airplanes at a very young age by his family, the hobby slowly migrated to radio controlled helicopters and before long, Roman was completely mad for anything RC helicopters. He was so obsessed, he became the vice president of the local helicopter flying hobby club. He even ran his own YouTube channel, highlighting his aggressive but impressive piloting skills. Tragically, Roman had no idea that his favorite hobby would be the end of him. Dang. On that cold afternoon, Roman and his dad brought Roman's high-end petrol-powered T-Rex 700 RC helicopter, which he can be seen holding here. Now this particular make is one of the largest remote control helicopters that you can buy. It's capable of reaching 60 miles per hour, measuring several feet from end to end. It weighed six pounds and featured a blade span of 62 inches with a rotor blade that spins at more than 2000 RPM. And I know I called that shit a toy when I first said it. And I guess you, it technically could be categorized as a toy. But that's a big ass toy. And that shit is moving fast as fuck. And that shit got some dangerous ass blades on it to be moving that fast. You know what I'm saying? This is a hazardous toy if you want to call it a toy. So this is the most definitely dangerous what he doing. Do y'all see how that damn helicopter doing all this and doing all that in the air? Man, get, everybody get away while this motherfucker flying around. Oh man, this one he'll fucked up too. It sounds like an absolute monster. As Roman and his dad and four other enthusiasts flew their helicopters nearby, Roman and his dad set their engine going. Recording.
The helicopter shot in the air, spinning and twirling, performing all the tricks in the book, all recorded by a GoPro that was strapped on it for its YouTube channel. After a while of tricks, at approximately 3 p.m., it was time for the ultimate showstopper. This trick was the one I mentioned before, where he'd have it free fall above his head before recovering at the last minute. The trick all played out as expected, but we are in a bizarre death video, so of course something had to go wrong. As the helicopter descended through the air, right above Roman's head, Roman pulled the trigger on the accelerator for it to gain elevation, and instead it spun out of control. In a blink of an eye, the razor sharp carbon fiber blade struck his head. The first impact shattered his skull, sending a piece flying. The blades then continued to scalp him, and then when they were done, they cut his throat, all while his dad watched. After all the blades had shattered, the helicopter was thrown rotor down 20 feet away from Roman. His dad rushed over to find that he was mortally injured. Despite his dad's best efforts to keep him alive, by the time the paramedics arrived, he was dead. Flying a remote control helicopter apparently is one of the most difficult aircrafts to operate. They are heavy, dangerous, and they're certainly not toys. This story was of course just a freak accident. It's thought that Roman's death is the second ever recorded fatality from a model helicopter. But what an absolute nightmare to be torn apart from your own pride and joy in front of your dad. It's gotta be one of the worst ways to go. Yeah, that's just a horrible way to go, man. And then that's just like the damn, the first one with the, all uh, the firecrackers. Family members seeing this happen. And this was even, well, I don't know. We could say it's even more brutal because of just the thought of just seeing this damn blade just chopping him up, just destroying his whole head and neck and throat and all that. But um, Ryan said one thing that made me want to retract what I was saying earlier about it being a toy. He was saying it's not a toy. And I agree with that. I agree with it's not a toy. But you know how, y'all know how we consider certain shit toys that shouldn't be really considered toys you know what i'm saying like you got adults who play with toys that's more dangerous than children i i would consider that adult an adult toy and i'm not talking about that freaky shit so y'all get y'all head out the gutter but for real man so i just want to take back i'm not trying to offend nobody when i was saying that was a toy or nothing like that i'm just saying it's something that Adults have fun playing around with. That's all I was saying. But R.P. to him, man. Damn, bro. This has been a crazy one, man. This has been a crazy one. And now we at number one. Let's go. India is known for its diverse and vibrant culture, its flavorful cuisine, and its deep traditions. Did you know that India has 22 official languages, making it the highest number of any languages of any country in the world? However, India is also known for its complete lack of safety and regulations. Just look at some of my other videos. Some of the most crazy and insane deaths come from India. And sadly, this story is no exception. It begins on the 28th of April, 2013. That hot summer day, a 50-year-old police officer named Saliandra Nathroy was going to attempt the ultimate stunt. Saliandra Nathroy was an Indian man who put his name in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most ridiculous of records. Saliandra was the world record holder of the farthest distance traveled on a zip line using just a ponytail. He also had his name in the Guinness Book of World Records for other great feats of strength, including pulling a train and a bus with his ponytail. Wow. Okay, so we can say uh, that this dude was like, he he was about this life. Like, you know, when we, before we even started the video, I was like, this dude uh, going down a zip line, hanging by his ponytail, like he... Oh, uh, asking the dial. He kind of asking like, 
that is it's a great possibility that he might die. But he was a Dell Devil anyway. He was a Houdini type anyway. You know what I'm saying? This is what he do. He was David Blaine. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of I'm not saying it make it better, but it, it make more sense now for him to be pulling this stunt. Cause in my mind, at first I'm thinking it's just a random person doing some crazy ass shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's not so random. And he doing what he loves, so I'm not gonna criticize him for that. But on that fateful day, Saliandra was going to try and beat his previous record of the farthest distance traveled on a zip wire using just his ponytail. This time, he was going to attempt a 600 foot zip line in front of a crowd of around a thousand people. Throughout the many years of Saliandra conducting these wild stunts, his wife begged him and pleaded with him to quit, fearing for his safety. Saliandra believed that this stunt would achieve everything he ever set out to achieve. So he told his wife that this would be his last and after this stun, he would retire and settle down with her. So on that day, a 600 foot zip line was set up across the Coronation Bridge in West Bengal, India. The zip line stretched 70 feet above the fast flowing Tista River. As Saliandra hooked up his ponytail to the zip line, approximately a thousand people gathered on the bridge they all watched as Saliandra attached his shoulder length hair to a pulley on the wire and without much thought, he set off. At first, as usual with these videos, it was all going well, until it wasn't. After completing half of the course, already breaking his previous record, all of a sudden, his hair got stuck in the zip line. Ow. He tried desperately to untangle it, but suspended 70 foot above a fast flowing river with a thousand people watching, panic ensued. He tried desperately to pull himself forward, but his hair was completely twisted and jammed in the inner workings of the zip line. The only thing keeping him up. He turned to the audience and started screaming instructions but they had no idea what he was saying. There were no officials there, no doctors, or medically trained persons on standby. And that's what I was thinking just right then, y'all. Like, man, even David Blaine, like, you doing these crazy-ass stunts, bro. It should have been some people down below him, like, in the river with, like, a safety net or lifeboats, whatever. So if he do fall, y'all can try to go catch him real quick or something. Not only that, it should have been people up on the bridge, bro. Like, he should have had support. He just went out here doing this shit all willy-nilly. Like, damn, I hate it that he doing it like that. All them damn people just witnesses. They don't know what the fuck going on. They can't help him because they're not even trained to help him. He needed trained people on standby in case this shit go south. Like he did. The only safety precaution that I can see is the fact that they dressed him in a life jacket. Witnesses were forced to watch as he continued to struggle, grasping at the rope, trying to move forward. But to no avail. After several minutes, Saliandra became motionless and hung lifelessly by his ponytail over the water. An agonizing 25 minutes later, he was brought from the zip line and rushed to hospital. But by then, it was far too late. Dang. They found that he had suffered a massive heart attack while panicking over the water. He was declared dead soon after arriving at the hospital. His younger brother, Benoy, who was witnessing his brother's stunt for the first time, said that we were proud of his bravery, adding that he was sure to win, but destiny had taken his life and the most beloved member of our family as well. Damn. But that is the end of the video. May all the people involved in this video rest in peace. As always, I'm interested in hearing all of your thoughts below. The RC helicopter in front of his father is just nightmare fuel. And Saliandra trying to do a ponytail zip line is just so ridiculous, you couldn't make it up. But as always, if you're into true horror content such as this, 
make sure you click in that subscribe button and click that notification bell to be alerted when I release new content such as this. I understand my upload schedule is crazy right now and I'm working on getting it back to a routine schedule. But as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Tracy Tales, y'all. We gonna have to move him up a tier, man. Real talk. I gotta put Tracy Tales in uh, at least the A tier now. Like, he, he in the A tier with Coffee House Crime and uh, Angela's, uh, not Angela, I'm tripping now. Anna Sauls, man. He up there, because this was a great video. All five of these deaths was like, what the is going on type of videos. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, man. Where do we even start, my brothers and sisters? I guess we'll just start like we always do it. We'll start at number five and go to number one real quick. If, if I can remember all of them. But number five was the man hanging with the damn ponytails. It's just like, like I said, man. Once I heard the story, I get that he was a daredevil type and he did these type of stunts. It wasn't no random shit. I just wish he would have been having some kind of emergency standby services or whatever the fuck the word or terminology is. He should have had people on standby in case something went wrong so they can save him. I hate that. Then to have a heart attack, I probably would have had a fucking heart attack too. Over that damn water hanging by my damn hair and the shit tongue. I probably would, I, yeah, yeah, that shit, that's some shit that can give you a heart attack for real, that situation he was in, not gonna lie. Which other ones, y'all, which other ones? I can't even remember what number four is, I ain't gonna lie, I don't remember the numbers, I'm just gonna call out uh, the different uh, videos, whatever, and the other one is the man with the damn uh, firecracker, bro. That's a fucked up one too because the family, I'm just thinking, like Ryan said, bro, the family would never get that image out of their head of seeing they relative standing up with that firecracker and that shit just go off and his head explode. And 4th of July would never be the same for them no more. I would hate 4th of July for the rest of my damn life, bro, because that's all I remember every time. Every fucking time. That's what I remember. Um,. Number four, the damn uh dude with the fucking helicopter, man. Damn, bro. The fucking helicopter, man, doing that stunt. And the way he died was brutal and just graphic for that damn blade to just be chopping him up, chopping his, all this shit up, just fucking him up. You know what I'm saying? Horrible, horrible. The damn lady with the, uh, the blender thing, man. That shit just tragic as fuck. It's so fucking random, like how that um that one right there happened. It it just make you think, like, boy, you can die. It's a million and a quadrillion, cabillion ways that you can die. For that lady to die like that, man, what is the chances of that happening? And it's one more, my brothers and sisters. Oh, oh goddamn, man, I'm not gonna even cap y'all. I don't even fucking remember what it is. What was the third? Oh shit. The damn dude who died from doing a funeral service from his mama and his mama coughing and of crushing his head. What is the chances of that? That's tragic as fuck. And another just crazy part as far as that third one go, as far as that uh, story go, I'm stuck on that. These people dig up the damn dead bodies every year to go have lunch with them and celebrate again. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I digress, my brothers and sisters. I hope they go let y'all go now, man. Tragedy tells y'all, I'm fucking with you hard, Ryan. It's like you just getting better and better to me, bro. I love all these videos, my brothers and sisters, and I'm ready to come back tomorrow because, you know, we're going back to Mike tomorrow from that chapter. But before y'all leave, make sure you hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and do all that for me. And remember this. Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.